Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in internet shitlords. And uh, today I'm going to be talking to you about the, the newest lawsuit that is apparently going to be happening in the, in the gaming world, um, and whether you should get in on it or not. <laughs> um, but first let me get my affogato working here because this is uh, otherwise going to start looking kind of ugly. Um, so, some of you may have heard, some of you might have not, but if you look back at some of my earlier videos, I've posted a few videos about the new TSR company. And so the new TSR is a company that, you know, the original TSR were the creators of the first edition of Dungeons & Dragons, not the, the new ones, which is Wizards of the Coast. You yeah, know, that's, there they are. Um, but rather... You know, the original company that Gary Gygax had, right? Um, and in that business, they, they, you know, when they went out, D&D was bought out by Wizards of the Coast, which was later bought out by Hasbro. And Wizards of the Coast apparently did not... I don't know, it's a weird story because, you know, you'd think that they'd have taken care of the trademarks, but apparently they didn't, and so somebody else got a hold of the right to own the name TSR and to own the TSR logo, which is kind of a, you know, a dumbass move on Wizards' part, right? But for a long time, the people who did get that didn't do anything of note with it, and, uh... Then eventually, when, it, when the, the rights to it were, were lapsing, this new guy called Justin Lanata picked it up and started a company along with Ernie Gygax, which is sort of the Fredo of the Gygax clan. And uh, they've been, you know, promoting a hobby shop dungeon museum in, in Lake Geneva and promising that they're going to do all kinds of exciting stuff and saying some politically controversial things that are, you know, on the side of the right, so I'm not, you know, like, how <laughs> you guys know, I'm, I'm not a, a lefty kind of guy, you know, they criticize the, kind of the wokeness of D&D &D and all that, which is fine, right, but, but they haven't produced any, any work, you know, they produced no books, you know, like, here, look, this, this, this is a book, huge book, many, many pages that I made, this, also, a book that I made pretty large, you know, they have no books, <laughs> GSR, has done nothing. Um, I think they've now released some kind of a board game or something. But the point is they haven't, you know, if they want to prove themselves as something other than a money-making scheme based on a nostalgia trip, they should probably make games, right? I don't know. Call me crazy. But I do think, you know, everything I have to say about gaming would be less credible if I hadn't made 120 RPG products, right? Um, think what you will about my my opinions, right? The fact that I have successful products gives me some credibility. They, their credibility is based on Ernie's dad's last name and on the logo of a company that isn't the company that they're that they are right now, but rather, you know, is what they paid to own that logo, right? Um, Anyways, they are now suing Wizards of the Coast. Instead of making more games, they're gonna, they're gonna they're doing a big fundraiser on GoFundMe, I think it is. And this is like drawing the attention of people who know less about the gaming hobby than I do, I think. Because like um, Clownfish TV, which I quite like, I watch their channel all the time. I'm 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 a fan, but they clearly don't know as much about what's actually happening in the gaming environment as I do. Let's say, and they report on this like this is gonna be. You know, this is like a Clash of the Titans or something, you know, it's just, it, this is, that isn't what's going on here. So, you know, should, should you think that, well, should you put money in a fundraiser for TSR to sue Wizards of the Coast? First, you have to ask, well, what are they suing them for? And second, I guess you also want to, to figure out, you know, are, are TSR trustworthy? Because I guess... That, let's deal with that first, that, you know, there's two possibilities here, right? One is that this is a scam, that they're never going, there's never going to be a lawsuit. In which case, if you put money in the, in the fundraiser, it'll go nowhere. 
well, except to the pockets of certain people. Um, or the other possibility is that it will be used for an attempted lawsuit. And then what you have to look at is whether or not that lawsuit has any chance of doing anything. Um, now, again, I'm not against TSR. I know there's some people, some OSR people that have like a passionate hatred of, 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 of TSR for some reason. Most particularly Eric Tenkar. I, I don't know what, you know, what his issue is. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't have any reason to hate them as such, right? The, the, some of what they've said makes sense to me. Right. I, I, I don't think Ernie Gygax did anything wrong in the interview he gave that caused SJWs to go ballistic. And clearly, Wizards of the Coast employees and all of the gaming SJWs are desperate to see this TSR go away because they recognize they're afraid of what it could be, right, of what it could do. The problem is I don't think they're, it's going to do that. I don't think that's ever going to manifest itself. But... Um, you know, it's not that I hate them or anything. I don't, I don't have any reason to hate Justin Lanada. I don't really know much about the guy. I know he ran an unsuccessful political campaign. There were women doing wrestling in a tub of grits at some point. I, 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 you see, he's like a colorful character, you know? Probably a really interesting guy to have a beer with. Probably someone I wouldn't give my money to at the same time, right? But, but the, the, no problem here as far as I'm concerned, right? The, this isn't an anti-TSR post. But it is a post that's really asking, like, you know, what is what is what do they think they're going to accomplish here? You know, and I think it's quite misguided. So the motivation for which TSR is claiming that they, they have a, you know, they have a case against wizards is that they're saying, well, you know, we have the TSR logo, which they do. They own that logo. That logo and the name TSR is on products that Wizards is now publishing, right? They're publishing all of the old first edition books and the basic expert books and, you know, all the stuff from the TSR era is being published through various means, like drive through RPG, for example, published ver electronically or in print. So this is, this is something that, you know, Wizards has every right to do. TSR has no rights to those products, but here's what they're actually making their complaint as far as I can see, which is, um, what they do, what, what they have, they're objecting to Wizards doing is that Wizards recently uh, put up a disclaimer on every single TSR product. And uh, they did this after a guy named Daniel Kwan, uh, a Canadian named Daniel Kwan, um, made the complaint that the Oriental Adventures first edition book, you know, written by Gary Gygax, I believe, um, was racist and orientalist and colonialist and and incredibly offensive right now it's it's far from accurate i'll grant that you know it's not the oriental adventures book is not a, a an incredibly well researched book right um but it's not something that's made you know to be racist if you read it it's very clearly meant to be like um based on the exciting ninja and and you know, kung fu movies that were coming out in the 80s, right? It was meant to be something for people to be entertained by. And, uh, and it's no more, the Oriental Adventure setting is no more of a, of a um, parody, let's say, um, or a, of an inaccurate representation of Asian culture than D&D's other settings are of European culture, right? In both cases, they're make-believe fantasy Hollywood versions of those places and times, right? That's why a product like Lion and Dragon can exist. My Lion and Dragon platinum bestseller, by the way, <laughs> is D&D &D done in a medieval authentic way. And it's totally different because of that than any other D&D &D, because all the other D&D studies are made in a happy, fun time, Renaissance fair, Hollywood uh, inspired setting sort of way, right? That is not in any way realistic, right? Um, his, it's not historically accurate, okay? So, uh, but Quan complained about this, and of course, Wizards immediately folded. They gave Quan a job after he'd called them a bunch of racists. And, uh, you know, Quan, by the way, ended up being producing one of, making one of the Candle Keep adventures, which was an Oriental adventure that was in no way 
better by virtue of his having Chinese heritage than what anybody else could have done. It was based on kung fu films and wuxia movies. You know, it was it had nothing of it that showed any kind of depth and and proved exactly the opposite of the guy's point. He was trying to claim that only the people that have, you know, the pure bloodline can write products that are that so that's, you know, so he could get that job. Um, but it was bullshit. He obviously doesn't know a lot about Chinese history and culture, you know, and what he produced was something that had virtually nothing that anybody who watches, you know, of any race, black, white, whatever, you know, Indian, um, whatever, any, any person, you sit them down in front of a TV, you make them watch a bunch of Ruja films, and they could have produced the same adventure that Quan produced for, um, for, for the uh, Candlekeep book. So it was total bullshit, right? But nevertheless, this prompted wizards, not just on, in, on Oriental Adventures, but as a, safe, as a safety precaution, they said, screw it, we're just going to do massive coverage. And they put this disclaimer on every single book from the TSR era that says these products contain horrible amounts of racism, sexism, homophobia, colonialism, imperialism, etc., and uh, you know they were they were a product of their age. We do we denounce the horrible things that they do in these books that they have in these books. But it would be uh, improper for us to change them because that would be a denial of, of whatever. And and so uh, you know we we apologize and we're doing better now as wizards. Yeah. So you're they're basically saying these are books written by I don't know white supremacists, and if you buy these, you are one. Right. That's that's what they're implying to the reader. Um, and yet they still want to make the profit of it, right? Because, of course, if they really believed any of this bullshit, if they really believed that these books were, like, literally dangerous to the spiritual well-being of anyone who read them, that it would have the chance of corrupting a person with their, with their evil, or that if the offense that they had was equivalent to a crime against humanity, they wouldn't publish the book, right? Like, they just wouldn't, you know? But they... But they want to publish because they want to make money, and they don't really believe any of this crap. You know, they're just they just know that that if they don't do something, then people like Quan are going to keep attacking them on Twitter. And what they the the one stupid thing that they haven't figured out yet is that people like Quan won't buy their products regardless, right? I mean, maybe he'll buy the one that has his name on it now because you know, it's it's got it's got his writing on it. But but the the people that talk about how much they hate D&D &D and how D&D &D should be fundamentally changed are people that never had any interest in it to begin with and they're never going to buy the product no matter how much you change it. And meanwhile, by changing it, you're alienating all of your customer base. But anyways, getting back to the topic, you've got TSR is now saying, well, you know, those books have the TSR logo in it and that disclaimer suggests that, you know, those works are somehow a work of evil and therefore, um, by, by putting that disclaimer on the books that have our logo, it is, it is an, you know, in some way uh, harmful to their business as a publisher, as TSR Publishing. Um, that's their argument. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I'm certainly not an expert on American civil law, which is, which is tricky, right? Like, you know, um, trickier in some ways than criminal law because... <laughs> It's in business, you know, lawsuits are very, very complex. Um, but I do know a few things, right? First of all, this sort of stuff is really hard to make the case for, especially if you're a company that hasn't done any products, right? <laughs> Number two is that, you know, uh, they're trying to raise, what, $50,000, I think, on, on Indiegogo? I don't remember what it is. 50, I, or GoFundMe. I, I don't know which one it is even. <laughs> but I think they're trying to raise 50 grand, right? Which is the coast is Hasbro, okay? Hasbro is one of the world's largest multinationals, right? They're based, you know, they're, they're a multinational corporation. They're based all over the world. You know, they have the, the work camps in China where they make the toys, right? All that sort of stuff. We don't know. We don't know if those people are being paid or not. I don't know for sure. I can't say one way or the other, you know, but... But, you know, they're, they're, they're a mega corporation with all the shady dealings and all the corruption that go with mega corporations as a rule. See Pfizer, for example, right? So, you know, these, these corporations are not, you know, they, they, their only moral, their only ethical obligation is to make money, right? Um, 
at least that's that's their perspective of it. At least that's the perspective of the, of the corporation as an egregore, right? There are other people who might have other priorities. There might be some good people in there that think, well, you know, we need to to try to make a good product, or you know, we need to try to have some kind of responsibility. Uh, and then there's other people in that work for the company that, that think, well, you know, what we need to do is subvert all of this and and bring on totalitarian Stalinism again, and this is our little bit of way of helping see, you know, the entire current Wizards of the Coast staff. Um, but fundamentally, <laughs> they are, they're going to be ruthless, and they're going, they already have, they have a stable of lawyers, right? $50,000 is something that for them would mean nothing, right? Like nothing at all. And maybe that's what Lanas is counting on. Maybe he's hoping that they're going to throw him a bone, and they're going to offer him you know, a hundred grand to shut the fuck up, right? Or maybe they'll, they'll, they'll try to get him, they'll try to buy his, the trademark back, right? So, because that would be the sort of thing they would love to do is just be able to, to buy their problem away. And then that way they, they never have to deal with this issue again, right? That's, that's the same, the same kind of overreaching, um, not wanting to even figure out the problem, sort of a no, non, no analysis approach that the disclaimer was in the first place, you know? So maybe that's what he's hoping to get. Um, but what he's not going to get, you know, I heard people say, oh, well, he's going to end up owning D&D. No, no, that, that's not going to happen, okay? There is no scenario in this world in which TSR ends up owning, you know, the current TSR, Justin Lanasa and, and, and uh, uh, Ernie Gygax, end up owning D&D. That's just not happening. All right. And, and, you know, most, I would say 99 out of 100 possible futures involve that money that they raise going nowhere, whether they put it into a lawyer or not, and the whole thing not, not accomplishing anything at all. You know, the only reason that you, in other words, that I would suggest someone should donate anything, be, you know, because if you're hoping, if what you're hoping is that this will take down D and D and Wizards of the Coast will, you know, Wizards of the Coast will be no more or something like that, and then suddenly it'll be back in the hands of people who are sane, trying to make, you know, game products that are like the, the you know, for gamers and stuff like that. This is not going to be the way that happens. I, I, I have the same dream, but this is not it. I and mean, if they're trying to, you know, if someone's trying to promise you that or even suggest that. That that is wrong. <laughs> that is not what is going to happen here. Um, now, if if you're willing to, to toss away money for the purpose of you know bothering Wizards of the Coast at least a little tiny bit, and also pissing off a bunch of SJWs, then you know you could probably do that. You could give your get that money <laughs> to, to to TSR because of course you know I've seen on Twitter right the. The anti-TSR people are just absolutely fuming at this, right? And, and so trolling them, it's okay. But you can also troll them by buying my products. You know how much they hate me. You just saw, you know, the Latam people did this whole, um, this whole brigadeering campaign against me, brigading campaign against me um, for my, my videos on them. Um, and they absolutely hate that my books get to bestseller status. You know? So, uh, you guys, if you want to, you know, if you want to support TSR, I'm not saying you shouldn't, but bear in mind, I've seen their reward scheme, right? If you put in a thousand dollars, you get like a, a signed membership card and like I think a a die wheel, like a, a like one of those like spinning little spinners that'll have like numbers on it for you to get random die rolls, which you know, people can do today with an app or with dice um, and a hearty thank you. And that's it because they have no products to give you, right? So if that's what you want to, you know, you give them a thousand bucks or you can, you know, spend a thousand bucks on my products, you know, and you're going to end up having the best gaming library in the planet. So it's up to you, right? You're going to end up having so many great books if you do that. I'm not quite sure if you can even spend a thousand bucks like... I'm not sure if the total pro cost of every product I've ever made reaches a thousand dollars retail or not. It might. It, it, it's definitely yeah. It's definitely possible. Except, you know, the RPG Buy Presents issues are all like five bucks and under, um, and I've always tried to keep my prices reasonable. But hey, you know, you could spend, you could buy my entire catalog, and then if there's still a difference left over from those thousand bucks, you know, you could put it on my Patreon or something like that. You know, you could, yeah, you, know, you could piss off the people that. 
that that uh, are trying to say, oh, you know, the pundits Patreon doesn't have a lot of people. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of people because people buy my games, right? <laughs> they buy tons and tons of my games, and I encourage them to do that all the time, you know. <laughs> but uh, you know, if you got left over, if you've got all my books, you could still do that, and you're still getting something. You're still pissing off the SJWs, and I'm producing something. I'm producing videos. I'm producing more books, right? And you're encouraging me to make more books. There are, speaking of which, books that will be coming out very soon. First of all, it might be even before the, the Silk Road book, um, we might end up having the um, Old School Companion Volume 2, Medieval Authentic Adventures will come out. It's going to be like 320 pages. And it's going to be all, basically all of my Medieval Authentic Adventures for Lion and Dragon or any OSR product, all in one place. Um, so, you know, that's, that's great. And in print, right? And then after that, it'll be, um, the, uh, the Silk Road slash Crusades setting, which we still haven't officially decided on a title with, with, um, with Mad Scribe Games. Um, but, uh, we're getting there. And, uh, the, the product itself is done. The writing is done. You know, now they just, you know, they've made the deal with me. They just have to produce the book. And it's going to be great. You know, it's going to be really cool. So I'm making more stuff. I don't see why TSR can't do that too. You know, but right now they just want to, I guess, sue wizards. I hope anyways that this video has made it clear to you what may or may not be accomplished there. Right? There is a very slim chance that, that TSR might get some kind of a financial um, benefit from it probably with certain conditions, you know, like some kind of an NDA or something like that, or, you know, um, maybe they'll have to cede their rights to certain things. I don't know. Um, but it is possible. But, but what, what's not going to happen, absolutely not going to happen, is that, that uh, $50,000 being raised by a bunch of nerds for Justin Lanata is going to end up having um, D&D rescued from the SJWs and put back in the hands of decent, you know, <laughs> decent and 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 uh, noble American gamers <laughs> who actually love the, the 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 product. You know that. Sadly, I would love if that was true. That would be the one hell of a movie, wouldn't it? You know, I would be so happy. But it's not going to happen, dudes. It's just not. Not that way. Right. This is this is a long game. <laughs> this is not going to be solved by 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 a guy who you know. Uh, a guy who likes grit wrestling and a guy and a guy whose biggest claim to fame is his dad's last name um, doing a, a petty lawsuit against ha against a multinational megacorp you know this is this is only going to get done by fighting for another decade or more and changing back taking back the culture and turning this around on the SJWs and making sure that they're the ones being being hunted out of the hobby rather than them trying to drive real gamers out of the hobby and and making sure that we we um restore to D, &D the the profitability of having games that are made for fun right maybe not even the sort of games we like when i made fifth edition it's not the game i like i mean i helped i helped make this product I don't play it very much because it's not the, the sort of game I like, but it's the game that I knew that the most people who like all editions of D&D were likely to like, and it's a pretty good rule set. You know? um, but the important thing is that, that we've got to stop um, RPGs from being used as a vehicle for totalitarian propaganda and nothing else, you know, for, by people that despise this hobby and would be really happy for the day when they've finally driven it into oblivion before they send people out to the gulags, you know? That's the mission here. The mission is not um, get some you know, grit wrestling Yahoo some money so that he's then going to sue, and then miraculously, I don't know, because QAnon said so, it's going to fix everything. You know, it's not going to fix everything. Uh, I don't think that it will. If you're just doing it to troll the, the, the SJWs, then go, Godspeed, go, go for it. I'm not going to stop you, right? But I want to make sure everyone understands the context of what is and is not credible here. So I guess that's everything for today. If you like this video, please share it everywhere. Share it where people need to hear it and share it where people might have, you know, might be pissed off at seeing it. <laughs> and like the video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And again, if you want to support me, 
pick up my products like Invisible College and World of Last Sun, not you. The other ones, <laughs> these ones pick them up because I make money from those ones now. So, uh, you know, or my RPG Fun and Present series or Lion and Dragon, Dark Alvian, Star Adventure, all of the great stuff. Um, links are in the description below. And uh, if you if you bought all my books or if you don't really want to buy my books but still want to support me, I've got a Patreon page. The link again in the description below. And uh, more than anything, just <laughs> keep fighting the good fight. Currently smoking Stanwell Deluxe plus Argento Natural.